gratitude and with respect, we begin by recognizing the First Nations on whose traditional land we make our spiritual home, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Neutral. We acknowledge with regret that this history has rarely been respectful. We commit to just relationships in the present. Along with First Nations everywhere, we recognize Earth as our mother upon whose water, air, and soil we depend for our lives and our well-being. In the midst of a climate crisis, we acknowledge that, as a species, we have not acted with respect for our precious planet. We commit to learning and practicing better stewardship. Seeking true community, we welcome all who have no church home, need strength, and are seeking deep meaning. Welcome to those who have doubts or who do not believe. Welcome to those whose faith is sure and to those who believe, but who are asking large questions. Welcome to visitors and to familiar friends. Welcome to grandparents, to mothers, fathers, youth, and children, couples, and single people. Welcome to people of all colors, gender identities, abilities, and sexual orientations. Welcome to each who is seeking an understanding of community and what it means to accompany one another. As we come together as church, we hold one another in gratitude and pray that we will be strong together, faithful together, and loving together. We seek blessing as we welcome the great gift of spirit in us, through us, and among us. Well, welcome to our worship service for Parkminster United uh, Church, whether you're with us on Zoom or Facebook this morning, uh, whether you're uh, in your kitchen or amongst the leaves, know that you are welcome today, and we hope that this is a time of, of some rest, rest some, some renewal, renewal maybe, maybe some inspiration, inspiration some challenge or comfort, or comfort whatever it is you might need today and with, with that, that heather has, has some announcements for us i do and, and so there was some bob you don't get to see the zoom chat but there, there is, is a lot of appreciation, appreciation for hearing you play gail harper, harper your number, number one groupie says it's great to see you playing but we we echo that so i'm going to come back to bob in just a moment but if you have an announcement and wendy i did see that you have, have one, one. Um, just, just put that, that in the chat, chat for me and, and I'll invite, invite you to share that in a few minutes. minutes. For, those for those on Facebook, Facebook there is a little bit of a lag, so just be aware of that. And if you would like to join us on Zoom sometime, send us a message and we can get you that Zoom information. You're welcome in Facebook to put comments in the chat throughout the service so we have a chance to see them. Um, just for our AV team at the back, I am getting some feedback that people are having issues with sound and or echoing uh, for those on Zoom, we are aware of that. Uh, we will try and deal with it as we can through the service. You can let us know in the chat, but we'll do what we can. Um, I am getting a lot of feedback though, AV, that the sound is not good this week. Um, announcements, so I'm gonna start with Wendy Watson, uh, then it'll be Jennifer Allen, and then Nancy. So Wendy, do you wanna turn your camera and mic on? Good morning, everyone. I want to say thank you from the Outreach Committee for all the things you do to support outreach at Parkminster. When there is a need, this congregation jumps right up. Whether it's for the food bank, Mary's Place, the YMCA shelters, the deserters, which is not a rock band, but that well-oiled machine that Roberta Hickey organizes for excuse me, for food for the Better Tent City, House of Friendship, the healing of the seven generations and more, including all the reaching out you do to each other in a hundred different ways. Outreach is the work of all of us. And to that end, Linda Bird, recently retired. Linda just retired in the last couple of weeks and it's taken her just two weeks to get herself going on a major um, campaign this November. So Linda and her super organizer, grandson Jackson, are spearheading Socks for Souls as our November outreach project. <clears throat> we are collecting socks and a word I'm sure my mother told me never to say in church, underwear as our November outreach project. Socks, especially warm, dry ones, are a most valued thing. 
You can find info in this week's WhatsApp and in the coming weeks in November to kick things off this week. To kick things off this week, sorry, Linda will be at Parkminster on Monday, tomorrow, November 1st, from 1 to 2, and Thursday, November 4th, from 11 to 12. So if you have socks and or underwear you would like to bring over, Linda will be there to collect them from you. There will be more ideas and info during the month. Just keep watching in WhatsApp. And thank you in advance for all that you do. Good morning, everybody. Well, I'm not um, in costume, really. I mean, my costume is that of a brand new dog owner. So many of you know that we got our puppy or, or I talked about getting a puppy probably nine months ago. So we actually got her yesterday. That's not my announcement. I just wanted to explain my costume. I'm very tired. I think she might have cried about four hours last night. Anyway, um, I am Jennifer Allen. I'm the chair of council and I wanted to just bring you an update on uh, what's coming up on November 14th. It's the launch of our hybrid services which combine in sanctuary service with Zoom worship. So we are super excited about this uh, new development and um, I just wanted to give a tiny bit of information for folks who will be coming to join us in the sanctuary. Uh, just know that you'll be getting a lot more information but you'll need to go through a check-in process and that will include showing your proof of vaccination for all those who are eligible so for children not yet old enough of course they won't have to show proof of vax because uh, they're not eligible for a vaccine but they will need to have their parents attest to their pre-screening that their pre-screening is negative so just that's all I wanted to share. Just watch for more information. We'll be um, publishing and sharing our safety plan with everyone so that uh, you know exactly what to expect. And uh, we're just super excited about this next step. So thanks and have a great Sunday. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, Nick, if you would turn your camera and mic on for me for your announcement. And AV, they're having trouble hearing me, just so you know. Okay. Hi, can people, can people hear and see me? Yes, they can. Okay, hi. Um, I just wanted to draw people's attention to the fact that this coming week is called Treaties Recognition Week in Ontario. Um, every week we start our service with a territorial acknowledgement and uh, it's, and part of um, that I think is recognizing what uh, territory, what, um, what treaties are and what treaties impact us here. So if you would like to learn more about that, I'm going to put a link in the chat that connects to the municipalities of Ontario, which might not seem like a direct link, but there's good information there. Uh, it might not seem intuitive, I mean, but there's really good information there and links to um, lots of things that are happening this week. Thank you. There, it keeps coming in and out. Um, it may be a connection issue, so we'll go with that. Uh, just again, Neil is away this morning, so we want to thank Bob Hudgens for being here and for the gift of music that you're sharing. So thank you, Bob. And Grace, our choral scholar, is here, and you'll hear her shortly in the service. And Lee McMahon doing a special ministry of music. So we just want to acknowledge everybody that's here this morning, our AV team as well, and everybody who is taking part in the service. We are getting there technical stuff. So uh, let us continue our time of gathering with the lighting of our torches. God's love knows no bounds. It draws us and keeps us together even as we are physically apart. It is the love that we encounter in the life of Jesus and the Spirit's power. We light our candles to remind us of this holy presence that calls us and unites us in worship. And in the lighting of Christ's candles, in witnessing to the meaning of these flames, may we be bonded together as the body of Christ, united in worship.
Let us pray. May the sacred wisdom that lies deep within us be awakened by the words we hear, by the thoughts we ponder, by the memories we recall, by the feelings that arise. May we be opened to a love we cannot imagine. May we be led into a life of joy and compassion. Amen. Good morning. I'm Debbie Sertzima. This reading from our faith tradition is taken from Mark's Gospel. Mark's version of the Jesus story, chapter 12, verses 28 to 34, from the Inclusive Bible. One of the religious scholars who had listened to them debating and had observed how well Jesus had answered them, now came up and put a question to him. Which is the foremost of all the commandments? Jesus answered, this is the foremost. Hear, O Israel, God, our God, is one. You must love the Most High God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you must love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The scholar said to Jesus, Well spoken, teacher. What you have said is true. The Most High is one, and there is no other. To love God with all your heart, with all your understanding and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. This is far more important than any burnt offering or sacrifice. Jesus, seeing how wisely the scholar had spoken, said, you are not far from the kingdom of God, after that, 
No one dared to question Jesus anymore. This is the good news of Jesus for all who need it. May it find a home in our lives. play a song I wrote last summer called Keep on Keeping On and it's a song that I wrote uh, inspired by Heather Sherman before she went on leave thinking that all of us had had, have had a time where we just had to keep on keeping on Thank you, Lee. That was lovely. Albert Einstein once said that when the answer is simple, then God is answering. Well, don't you love it when things are simple? Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. It's simple, right? Maybe, Maybe in the, the same, same way, way that, that running a marathon, marathon is simply, is simply moving, moving your legs quickly for 26 miles. Or in the same way that losing weight involves eating less and exercising more. Or in the same way that building a successful business means finding customers and selling a product or a service. Simple, right? The formulas are simple, but often 
implementing these formulas requires tremendous effort on our part to learn new behaviors and disciplines. Sometimes we need to identify the roadblocks or obstacles within ourselves that are getting in the way, beliefs that are self-defeating, perfectionism, assumptions that are wrong, or any number of things. So what do you think gets in the way of living into that simple formula to love God and love neighbor? What's your experience? Now, love calls for different responses in different situations. Sometimes it's easier such as when our hearts are moved by a tragedy and we contribute money or when we give a grieving friend a hug. And even those can take us out of our comfort zone sometimes. But how do you love your cranky hormonal teenager? How do you love your intolerable parent? How do you love your ex-spouse? How do you love your overbearing supervisor? How do you love someone whose values are so different from your own? How do you love someone who has betrayed you? How do you love the addicted person who steals and manipulates to support their habit? So I want to share something with you that gave me a new insight into this simple yet challenging scripture. Sometimes it's instructive to go back to one of the original languages of scripture. Uh, I looked up the word that's translated from the Greek to the English as love. It turns out that the Greek word agapao, A-G-A-P-A-O, includes a couple of elements in its definition and usage that aren't, uh, that aren't associated with our definition and usage of the word love. And those elements are to welcome and to entertain, to welcome and to entertain. In other words, a key element of love from Scripture is hospitality. And I wonder what's missing from our notions of love that might be enhanced by a sense of hospitality. What does it mean to be hospitable to and to entertain God and neighbor in our lives? And to me, what it says is that love involves making space for God and neighbor within ourselves. Just like we might welcome someone into our home. And if we think of ourselves as containers full of beliefs, preconceived notions, biases, judgments, experiences, hurts, and fears, it can get pretty crowded in there. We can get pretty full of ourselves. To be hospitable to God, to love God, means to move some of those things out of the way and make a little room for mystery, for the unknown, for possibilities that we can't yet imagine. Making room begins with the questions, what is God, what is love calling me to do in this situation? What does it mean to love this person, these people, in this particular situation? Not love in general, not some preconceived notion of love we struggle with applying in tough situations. Love is sentiment, love is kindness without boundaries or accountability. It's hard to stop figuring out what love looks like in any particular situation. And that's why those questions are so important, because they're a call for help. 
They're the beginning of the process of letting go of control, of surrendering, of making our soul a hospitable place for God to dwell so that we can entertain possibilities possibilities we hadn't considered before that God might present to us to love our neighbor. So I want to share with you a story of someone who, a someone and a bunch of someones who when asked to share love in a difficult situation walked the difficult road of hospitality and the healing that it brought in a really difficult situation. And it also demonstrates the importance of community in these situations. In 1994, a man by the name of Robert was about to be released from prison. And he was there for crimes our society considers to be among the most repugnant. Everyone who knew him dreaded the day of his release. Harry Nye, a Mennonite pastor in Hamilton, took a call from a prison psychologist who was working with Robert leading up to his release. Robert had been to Harry's church in Hamilton before he was arrested and had identified Harry as a possible community support after his release. Now, Harry could scarcely remember Robert, and what he did remember made him uncomfortable. Nevertheless, guided by his faith, tempted with foreboding, Harry gathered some members of his congregation and drove two hours to the gates of the prison and brought Robert home to Hamilton. And they struggled mightily with the question of what it meant to love Robert. Guided by their faith, they decided that for a minimum of one year, they would pledge to have daily contact with Robert, helping with such basic needs as finding employment and housing, attending medical appointments, and shopping. They also undertook to hold him accountable if he showed any signs of slipping into old habits. And the, the police began to witness something they'd never seen before. Robert was becoming part of a small community, and he was being looked after. Indeed, his behavior was not only being monitored more closely than any police service could ever achieve, he was also being held to account for himself. And for perhaps the first time in his life, he was making friends, real friends. From this one act, mirroring the radical hospitality of the Gospels, sprang what has since become a world-renowned project called Circles of Support and Accountability. What began in a small church basement among a group of the faithful has grown and been embraced by faith and non-faith groups within and beyond North America. And today, there is a circle of support and accountability project in every major city in Canada. It's so simple. Be hospitable to God ask, what does it mean to love this person, these people, in this particular situation? Love God and love neighbor. That's the essence of the religious life. As the religious scholar in scripture says, this is far more important than any burnt offering or sacrifice. It's not about piety, doing all the right religious things. It's about love, love lived out. It's not about doing all the right church things, 
attending worship, serving on committees, or whatever else we might do to establish our connection with, to the church. These things are only of any value if they lead us to love more, more often, more deeply. If they lead us to welcome God and neighbor into our lives more frequently and more genuinely. And what's the grace? What's the gift of living this way? You get a sense of it when Jesus responds to the religious scholar. You are not far from the kingdom or kingdoms of God. The promise is to be close to God's realm. To find that while you've been making room for God, you've actually become God's guest. In loving God and loving neighbor, you now live where God dwells. A place where love unfolds and manifests its ways beyond our wildest imagining. Thanks be for this grace. In me, in you, in the world, in the trees, the, the breeze, everywhere. We're inhaling God, we're exhaling God. We give you hope in this cosmic crisis with God that uh, we can be whole, that we can be made one. So just pick up, pick up a contract. Well, the cosmology says it already is. We don't see ourselves in that way. If you go into fractals, there's wholeness. Everything devolves into something whole. And so um, I, I read David Bohm, I read the physicists, and I, I know there is actual discernible wholeness, and all it takes is for our eyes to be opened. Well, if you're Christian, it's Jesus who opens the eyes of the blind man. It is um, the call of the gospel to be neighbors with everyone and to love them as we love ourselves. Um, that's what I see, a wholeness that is yet emerging. Love is the understanding that we're all one tribe that as you love your mother, no matter what color the skin or height or disability or, or ability, we're one child. And we are called to love one another. The journey is with community, toward community, and God is community.
Friends, thank you for your ongoing support of the ministry and mission of Parkminster United Church and the United Church of Canada through the Mission and Service Fund. Your gifts are one of the many ways love is made real in our church, our community, and the wider world. Because of your thoughtfulness and generosity, the greatest commandment remains at the core of who we are as a church. Let us pray. God of all creation, your gifts to us are as diverse as the people you love. In gratitude for all that has been given to us, we offer gifts of money, time, and our abilities. Use these gifts to make your love known throughout the world. We, de we dedicate ourselves and all that we are to your work of uniting creation in love. May they be blessed to this purpose. Amen. And so, friends, let us come together in prayer to reflect on and share the yearnings, the struggles, the joys of our lives. And we're wondering this morning if you have any concerns or blessings that you would like us to share. I'm going to invite you now to put those into the chat in Zoom, and we'll share them aloud. If you're with us on Facebook, you're also welcome to use the comments. Maybe we should pray for our ongoing sound issues. Let us pray for the ongoing mic issues. I'm being told, actually, that the handheld is not doing any better for me. So it's still quiet, I'm being told. So... Let us pray for sound issues. Uh, lots of feedback of thanks for, for Lee and his music this morning. So thank you again, Lee. Uh, Joe, some lovely comments about your message, and, and thank you for that this morning. But yeah, please do, if you have any joys or concerns that you would like us to, to share aloud this morning, we invite you to do that at this time. Well, perhaps we should um, give, give thanks that we're beginning the, the re-entering into live sanctuary worship next. Uh, on the 14th. Yes, on a couple 14th. weeks away, that's right. That's so right. A, 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 new, a new time, a time of, of coming back, but also moving forward. So that's exciting. And thank you to all the leaders in the church that have, have led us through and continue to lead us in this time. Uh, certainly the COVID working group and, and council as well, uh, among the many committees, etc. cetera. Uh, from Scott, I start my new job on Monday, and it is even in the field of engineering, so my degree is being used finally. Congratulations, and all, all the very best as you start, start that off. Uh, Kathleen is sharing that today is her 18th anniversary since I survived uh, a stroke. So some mm. memories bring forth for Kathleen. Yeah. Absolutely. Today. And now there's some coming through, Joe. Mine just jumped. Okay. Um, so Marilyn Hill is you. giving thanks. It's a joy. Marilyn and Bud's nephew, Chris, who was in a, a hunting accident 10 and a half months ago, has been discharged from the rehab hospital. So we give thanks for that. Absolutely. And Nancy, for the world leaders and decisions they will make in the coming days at the Climate Summit in Glasgow. Absolutely, and very important work being done. Any other prayer concerns? We'll give it just one, well, not a minute, but in our world, a minute, just in case some are coming through. There aren't any on Facebook. Um, what I may do sound system while we're waiting is I might use the handheld at this stage for my prayers, but I might just jump back to my um, face one for after, if that's okay. Uh, Kathleen also saying the 4th of November is her birthday. So a uh, happy birthday to you. And this is sort of our, our Sunday where we're acknowledging Anniversary Sunday of Parkminster, which I'll get to in a minute, but we should, we should give joy for, for this congregation. And Joe, I will give joy for being in team with you. And I will as well. Oh, you're so sweet. All right, let us, let us pray. Oh God, on this, the Anniversary Sunday of Parkminster United Church, we pray for all people of this faith community created and blessed by your love. We thank you for worship services, for music and activities, for being able to come together in your name. And especially in these times, we give thanks for the connections that this community has offered. We give thanks for the various committees that seek to do your work in this place, for the council and the various committees and groups. We give thanks for children, youth, and families, 
for staff and lay leaders, for each person who shares their gifts at Parkminster and beyond. We give thanks for our faith family, for the worship and work of this congregation, for our community connections and outreach, for the work of resettlement and the relationships nurtured with families. Help us to continue to care and support one another, our community and the wider world. We thank you for memories of past times, both, both joyful and challenging, that have shaped this faith community. We thank you for the charter members of this community and for those who are gone from our midst who built the foundations of our congregation. We thank you for the ability to dream dreams and the wisdom to interpret them. And we thank you for the many helping hands in this place, for warm words and smiles, for cards and prayer shawls, for the concern and care of each person in our midst. We thank you for the relationships that grow dearer with time, for the laughter and stories that bind us together. We thank you for good friends and new ideas, for all that the future will hold, and for the confidence to and hope to envision it. Loving God, we bring before you this morning our hopes and dreams for our church. Hear us now as we offer up our prayers for this faith community and for our world. We pray for all healthcare personnel and caregivers, for those who are sick, undergoing treatments, recovering from surgeries, for the safety of those who are working on the front lines, for those who are isolated and struggling due to the pandemic, or other circumstances, for the healing of racial inequality, systemic racism, injustice, and hatred, for the first peoples of this land and for the work of healing and reconciliation and for generational healing, for those who are hungry and homeless, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and now, in a moment of silence, we lift up the prayers that we have shared together this day, as well as those that we hold deep within our hearts. God of all people and places, we are called to be the church, the family of Christ in every age. Today we renew our commitment to one another and the journey that we share. Bless these prayers in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen.
And so just as Jesus left this earth, we too leave this place and time of worship as we extinguish our Christ lights. And as the smoke rises from the candles and is absorbed into the air, may it be a reminder that Christ goes with us. All creation is infused with the holy. Grace abounds, calling us onward toward healing and wholeness. Holy Presence of God, you shimmer in every stranger I encounter, whether in the world or in my heart. When you came in human form, you sat at table with all those who walked the edges of life and knew their presence as sacred. Create in me a space to welcome in all that is hard and disorienting those moments when I feel lost, angry, heartbroken, overwhelmed, ashamed, joyful, grieving, or in love with life. Help me to honor the guests who arrive at the door to usher in the grace that newness offers and find Christ's compassionate presence there. May your infinite compassion 